a popular video game your children may have come across. It is free, it is online, and it allows kids to torture. We have to warn you, these images are pretty disturbing. Someone's idea of fun is called Torture Game 2. It puts your child in the driver's seat to torture a make-believe hanging person with anything from a chainsaw to a razor blade. Understandably, child experts worried about the game's potential impact on kids. Will it make impressionable youngsters numb to torture? Joining us now, Melissa Henson. She's the Director of Public Education for the Parents Television Council. Good morning, Melissa. Good morning. Um, you know, what we see that green, um, that green you, you can paint the person you're torturing, you can stab them, you can take a chainsaw. That's a stake you can put through the body and red blood comes out. Uh, you can take a razor blade and start cutting him up. I mean, it's disgusting, Melissa. Uh, yeah. But others say, look, it's, it's just a game. You know, I, I get so sick of hearing that excuse. It's just entertainment. It's completely harmless. We have so much evidence now that kids are very much affected by what they consume in the media. There are over 50 years' worth of research, over 1,000 studies that have documented a causal relationship between exposure to media violence and aggressive behavior in children. And there's uh, medical research that's come out more recently that has shown um, the same areas of the brain are stimulated when a child is exposed to media violence as are stimulated when they're exposed to real life violence. So this in is, terms of... This is how it starts. It, it's yeah. hanging there unaffected and then, and then you can paint it, you can kill it, you can do right. what you want to it. It's a defenseless like man tied up in, in, in a position. Let me just share with you, this, one mm -hmm. of the people online who played it says, writes this, because you can comment after you play the game, he says, I've always wanted to do this and this game lets me horribly mutilate someone without any problems or without actually hurting someone. I want to kill someone, but I don't. Games let me do this. Uh, I mean, I, arguably that makes the argument in favor of the game, I guess, Melissa, because they get an outlet for their violent tendencies without taking it out on actual human beings. How, how would you respond to that argument? Well, this is another argument that I've heard many times, but I have not seen any scientific evidence. And if you're aware of any that you can point me to, I'd be glad to look at it. But I'm not aware of any scientific evidence that shows that um, people can play out aggressive tendencies in video games and thereby they sort of relieve the pressure to do it in real life. Um, quite the contrary, you know, with respect to pornography, for example, there are a lot of studies that indicate that men who uh, frequently consume pornography are, are less likely to um, view rape uh, negatively. Uh, they're more likely to sympathize with the aggressor rather than the victim. And I'm sure the same is probably true with uh, media violence. I think violence begets violence. If you consume violent media images, it's going to make you have more aggressive thoughts and tendencies. What about, um, and I should just point out, this is actually quite popular. Over, It's free. It's online. Over 200,000 views. It's just some kid in uh, South Africa who, who made this thing up. Uh, 200,000 views is get, gets a rating of 9.3 out of 10. It's been promoted on some legitimate gaming sites. Uh, so people are finding it more and more and, and seem to enjoy doing it for whatever whatever reason. Um, but, but I want to point out there are lots of shows out there uh, that, that show things like this, that show torture, uh, that, that show a lot of violence. I mean, they, some might argue this is the least of our problems, Melissa. <laughs> well, I, I think there is an important distinction, which is that television programs, movies, they're passive entertainment. And although there is a causal relationship that has been demonstrated between exposure to violence in passive entertainment, um, when you're actually engaged in the violence, when you're, when you're actively taking part of it, um, I, I think the effects are all the more marked in, the, in the, uh, the child that's playing these video games. So I, I think we need to be uh, aware of the consequences. We need to be aware of how easy it is for kids to access this game. The fact that there's no context for the violence. Uh, it's, it's just a body dangling there yeah. and you can do all kinds of unspeakable things. It's just random torture of a defenseless there's human being figure. Uh, yeah, so. and, there, and there's no objective except to Right, there's no objective. You don't get do points. It's want. just to torture. That's <laughs> right. the fun yeah. of the game. Right. Well, Melissa, thanks for being here with your insights on it. I'll tell you, uh, Bill, I, tr I 
you know, in preparation for the segment, mm -hmm. I went online and started to do this. You checked uh, out the, uh, yeah, the game. Yeah, I checked out the game, and I was I was personally disturbed by it. I mean, that, really? the thing we had on the screen was kind of weird because it had all the green paint on it, it. It affected you. But you can, yeah, because, you, you know, obviously I'm looking at it, so I, I hit the razor blade, and then I hit the body, and you should see all the blood spurts, mm. pop, you know, pop up instantly. I mean, it's creepy. It's creepy. And I'll tell you what, I don't have children, but if I did, I wouldn't want them playing this. Well, got it. Uh, breaking news now. Let's roll.